Hi beauties, friends. In all actuality, I probably should have made this video starting the day of Valentine's Day, actually. I just got a call that took off so much of my stress. Um, I'm laying across the bed in case you couldn't figure that out. I know it's not the most attractive or cute pose. I'm rambling. I need to get to the point. Everybody's waiting to hear. February the 13th, we were going to bed, and all of a sudden, I was like, mm, I'm going to be flirty and cute, and maybe get some Valentine loving, <clears throat> so I kind of rolled over, I was half on, half off, Jeremy's chest, and... I said to him, I don't know the right words. I don't know exact words I said, but like, where do you see us in five years? Or do you see us in five years? Or do you, what does our relationship look like in five years? One of the varieties, one of those varieties, okay. And instead of his normal five-year plan to do great things, whatever, he said, not with you like this. I don't see us. And I was like, well, you know, I hope I'm not like this in five years. Okay, so February 13th. And I said, what does that mean, Jeremy? And I was already getting defensive. I, I kind of pulled away. I'm like, what does that mean? And he said something along the lines of, I don't see us in a relationship with you like this. And I'm like, what do you mean with me like this? It's like, I'm getting better every day. It's not that I, I tried to be sick. I didn't try to break my foot. I, <sighs> And he's like, I know, but you just haven't gotten better. And, I mean, like, he didn't say it like that. I'm saying it like that. He was very kind. And I was very himself, which is kind and soft-spoken and not to hurt anybody. Meanwhile, my soul was being ripped out. Um... So, I said, are you trying to say you want to break up? And for the first time, he said yes. And we were broke up. Five years, and it was gone just like that. Except it's not really gone because... We're still acting exactly like we act together. Loving, funny, watching TV, sleeping in the same bed. 
we're us. It's not change. Anybody knows me knows that I have had my hellion days that I was a force to be reckoned with that I was going to fight to the death for what I believe in for who I love I was going to fight to the death just to get my own way I thought for a big portion of my life, getting someone to be mad at me was the only way to get attention. And it was partly true in my childhood. I didn't get attention unless I was bad. I just didn't get attention as a teenager. And... with my relationships. It was kind of the same. Until I met Jeremy. When I met Jeremy, I don't know how many of you know the story. But he was commenting on some of my posts. And he was always so respectful and kind. And wasn't flirting or, you know, trying to hook up or anything like that. He was just literally being nice. And I remember the first time I spoke to him on the phone. He said, I could see it in your face. And hear it in your voice that you had some of the same sadness as I did. And he was right. We shared a lot of commonalities of distress in our marriages. And he was already mostly divorced when I met him. He didn't divorce his wife. His wife divorced him. Oddly enough, for some of the same reason me and him are having problems. Um, Or maybe not so odd, because isn't that how it works out? Um, I can't really talk about what's going on because that's not my story but Jeremy has some personal financial stuff going on and a lot of what decisions he's made I know is To make his life easier. One. And. And I'm I'm trying. Maybe it's wrong. But I'm trying to convince myself that. It's him. It's his way. Of making sure that I have somewhere stable and where I don't have to worry about you know food or living or being a bother to him. I asked him why later on, I guess, why did he want to break up with me so bad? 
And he told me I let him down. I didn't get well. I didn't try to get well. He thought that I had grown comfortable in being taken care of. It makes me so sad. The man that I love very much knows me so little. I would say somebody that I loved so much for so long, I and him didn't get together. That's one of the many reasons was because he knew how much I valued my freedom, my freedom from my body after I lost weight. But even before that, he knew how much I valued losing weight at that time in my life. And he couldn't take that away from me. And he knew he put probably. So we didn't get together. And back to meeting Jeremy, I was actually in Louisiana and I had thought I was gonna leave my husband and just stay there for a while. But I, after I started talking to Jeremy, I had been there about a month and um, we started talking on the phone and whatnot. And he was like instantly when we went to hang up, it was like we both paused because it was like what there's something missing that we're not saying or doing. And like, I don't know, fourth or fifth time we talked. He said, I know this is crazy, but I'm going to do it anyway. He's like, I love you, Evie. And I was like, I love you too, Jeremy. Because it just felt like natural to tell this man that I had become such good friends with in such a short time that I loved him because I did. Hands down did. He was the sweetest, kindest most loving, most surprising guy um, I had ever met. And he kind of won my heart. But as the story goes, I started miscarrying. I didn't know I was pregnant. And um, I had to go back to New York to my doctor's. Um, the husband come and got me and we had a very difficult trip back home. I was in bed for a few days. I got better, obviously, and life went on, but I stayed talking to Jeremy because I knew my marriage was over. I just wasn't ready to walk out that door yet. And... I just, I needed to make sure that it was as over as I felt it was. And sure enough, it was. And almost exactly a year from when I started talking to Jeremy, he come and got me from New York. And we've been together ever since. And <laughs> we've been through some stuff some crazy stuff but we made it and everything was going pretty good and then I fell when I fell it ruined my life 
not only did it, I have the worst 48 days in the hospital, I could feel that something was gonna change. I was upset with Jeremy most of the time I was in the hospital. It, it was either a high of being upset at him or a high of being so thankful for him that I couldn't even breathe. I was so thankful. He would come and he would give me baths like every three days in my bed because I couldn't get out of the bed and he was so tender and soft and kind. And it was him that I stood for the first time for. I knew I could do it. He wanted me home. I wanted to be home. So I was like, babe, can we just practice? And if we can get it on recording, I was like, then I can show everybody that I can do this with you. I keep telling them I could do this with you. And it was because I trusted him. It was because I knew he would not let me down. He would hold me. He would keep me safe. Which he's done. The last five years... I went through a lot of therapy, as some of you know, and that helped me a tremendous amount. But what really helped me was reaching over at night and touching Jeremy and knowing he was there with me and he was protecting me and taking care of me. We did have a little thing happen in September. You know, I had lost my baby, Belle, and she was the most sweetest. No, that's a lie. It's a lie. Trust me, it's a lie. Belle was not sweet. That's not how you describe Belle. Belle was full of attitude and aggression and... She loved me, but she loved Jeremy more. At the end of the day, she loved Jeremy more. That dog. Anyway, I lost her two weeks after my birthday. We had to schedule it. It was terrible. She had been so sick the last few months. And it was just... It was weighing on her, it was weighing on me. I just, I couldn't put her through any more suffering. So we made the appointment. And Jeremy, Jeremy saw that through and saw me, and saw me through it. And then about two weeks after that, we had a little breakup because I got mad, really, really mad for the first time about some decisions that were made without me. And I said that I didn't wanna be engaged anymore and then a couple of days later, he broke up with me. But then we were like, we can't be apart. We don't want this. And we were back together. And everything was fine. Life around us wasn't fine, but me and him were fine. I thought we were good, actually. And anyway... So we're broke up now. Everybody 
has gotten the memo and my life has turned upside down. People have been so cruel to me. Even friends. That was the weirdest part. But then there's also been so many people that has reached out to me and just been the sweetest, kindest people to me. And this is what I really want to say. I want to say thank you. Thank you for that. I am so appreciative. So appreciative. So you want to know what's up for my future right now? Oh, after a weekend of constant boxing, um, most of my things are in boxes. I kind of want to go through my clothes one time before I go so I can have all my sales stuff together. But um, Jeremy's not going to be living in his house anymore. He will be living with a friend, a non-sexual friend. Everybody thinks he left me for somebody. He did not leave me for another woman. Um, so. Um, but. It's so hard to separate your life from this person that you love. It's so hard to like just, I didn't really have that with my ex because all my things were always in boxes. He didn't want my stuff out. So I didn't really have anything to box but makeup and clothes. So I didn't really have this like aching pain of, oh my God, I feel terrible because I never had to like really go through it before. So, or in the same way before. Um, I am filling out paperwork for housing, for financial help, for emergency help, um, my SSI disability. Like, I've been doing that for a while, but, like, it's getting pushed now to the, to the line that I need to get it done. Oh, my God, my eye itches so bad. And, um... So that's where I'm at. I don't know what else to tell you. If you have a question, leave it in the comments and I will reply. The other day I started recording and to be honest, I didn't know what to say. I was just rambling. I didn't, I don't even know exactly what words come out of my mouth, but I've gotten so much hate since then. And I'm really wishing I hadn't shared my relationship online. Um, I know it helps other people see what's normal and not normal and all that. But honestly, me and Jeremy are going to be friends. No matter what happens, me and him are going to stay friends. I am just not the kind of person that stays angry for a very long time, unless it's just something, I don't know. Usually if it has to be with somebody I love getting hurt that I can't forgive, not nothing done to me, but like Jeremy has made me a better person and he has made me not want to fight and he's so kind. Even with this transition, he's being so kind to me. And 
while it hurts, the things that were said hurt. I feel war like I don't even want to say that. I just I let myself down in this relationship and I'm upset at Jeremy for letting my disabilities get between us, but I also know that I let myself down as well. And don't get me wrong, I'm, this isn't something I'm going to get over emotionally anytime soon. But people have just been so cruel to me and it just seems crazy. So I don't know. I don't, I think I'm just going to like focus on other things like packing and moving and my feelings on that. And less about the relationship, if that makes sense. So anyway, thank you for everybody that has been kind to me and has loved me and reached out to me and sent me messages and likes and they commented on my post. I'm so blessed for all of you. And I want you to remember that you're wonderful, you're beautiful, and I am blessed to have you in my life. And I love you.
it's me, Evie. We have Andrew with us. And we are on day 440,000 million trillion decades into this move pack again for the second time because I didn't get rid of enough stuff the first time. We have the U-Haul pod thingy outside and we are trying to stack it full of my stuff without stacking it too full for the bed. Andrew's helping me. Don't know where the other two boys are. They should be here. And that's what's going on. This is the mess. The mess that surrounds us.